Hi everyone, I'm Rob Ford, and I'll be introducing the last two sections of the Climate Modeling Day. Uh, but first, just some info about me. Um, I'm a PhD student in Atmospheric Science at the University of Albany in New York. I'm generally interested in climate dynamics and modeling, and some of my recent work is related to climate sensitivity and cloud feedbacks, which are topics you may have learned about in previous tutorials. I'm also an active member of Project Fithia, which is a community effort to develop geoscientific Python tutorials. So earlier today, you learned about some of the simplest climate models, and you started adding some complexity. So now I'd like to in give an introduction to the most complex form of climate models, commonly called Earth system models. So in the previous tutorials, you found that climate models can take an initial climate state and use physical rules to estimate what the climate may look like at a later time. Then by repeating this process for many time steps, these climate models can project far into the future. Now a major step up in complexity are GCMs, which are global climate models, also known as general circulation models. Now these simulate the full three-dimensional motion of at least the atmosphere, but usually also the ocean, and land and ice processes. So instead of only thinking about global averages, we can now start to explore the complexity of regional climates. Now GCMs are composed of models for each of the climate system's spheres, which are then coupled to model their interactions. Earth system models add additional complexity um, by coupling the physical climate system of GCMs to the biological, chemical, and ecological systems that we know or expect are important for climate. Now let's go over some of the main ingredients of ESMs and GCMs more generally. So the number of equations and the spatial complexity of ESMs requires us to solve them numerically. And this means discretizing space and time. All of the components of the climate system must be divided into grid cells that physical quantities can move between over some specified time step. We also need to decide which physical relations to include and which approximations to make. And finally, we need to run this thing on a computer, which means writing these discretized equations in code. So all of these ingredients can differ across models, uh, but since today you'll be plotting data from an ESM and looking at some grids, let's think a bit more about discretization. The simplest grid, which you likely encountered earlier this week, is a grid constructed from evenly spaced latitude and longitude lines, like what is shown in the figure on the top here. Some ESMs do use this type of grid with some resolution, for example, one degree or a quarter degree, but others have more complex grids. For example, the poles can be moved away from the geographic poles, or there could be three poles. Um, some of the grids have increased resolution over certain regions if some process needs a finer scale to be resolved, and some even use grid cells that aren't rectangles, which might look something like this soccer ball. So since different models use different grids, it's essential to regrid the data in order to compare results across models. So in this tutorial, you will practice regridding some Earth system model data. <laughs> 